weight project uh, was about defining the sustainable yield of groundwater in drylands. Um, and in drylands, uh, groundwater uh, stems from indirect recharge processes from flood recharge uh, to alluvial aquifers uh, to a large part. And it's very difficult to assess this uh, resource. Uh, we wanted to tackle this. And for this purpose, we combined four methods. We had geomorphologists working on paleohydrology. Uh, so these were geomorphologists, physical geographers. And their job was to do paleo-flood reconstruction, to learn from the past how intense floods can be in areas where sometimes we don't have hydrometric service at all or where data are scarce. We had specialists for Vado Zone Hydrology, Ofer Dahan from Israel, who developed a now patented new type of PDR unsaturated zone, Vado Zone monitoring that was extremely useful. <coughs> Uh, we had hydrology, hydraulic modeling, which was uh, my part, together with Gerardo Benito, and finally groundwater isotope hydrology, also my part. If you look at this basin, this is the, uh, the Kwisat Basin in the western part of Namibia, the Namib. You see maybe uh, this line in the middle, which is the escarpment right of this line. We have a uh, canyons, um, hard rock. Uh, geology and left of this we have the desert uh, Namib sand sea, uh, which is uh, the target. I will start now with let's see whether this works. Be more here with K400, which is the first station for the paleo flood, and then I will move to um, the Namib sand sea and the Queen of Aquifer. In some of the tributaries, you find sediments, and if you are there, it's a bit difficult to see now. There is one. A guy here, it's Tamir Grodek here. These are huge. When you are there, you, you hardly imagine that this stems from floods because these floods must have been enormous, huge, much bigger than whatever we, me we measure there. Sometimes you find hydrometric stations just on the bottom of these sediments. Um, the Spanish group um, with Gerardo Benito and Yehuda Enzo from Israel, they worked on these sediments and they developed methods to reconstruct how big these floods were. And with this method, we can get this. This is the record of highest floods in the Kuizet Basin during the last 1,000 years. Very interesting now. If you look at this year, this is what we are measure, measuring now since like 20, 30 years. Um, there was one big event, but all the others are much, much smaller. So what we learned from this is that in the past we had huge events, and these huge events recharged uh, the aquifers. And we still use this water. Now, the second step, green um, heading, uh, we move into the Vado Zone hydrology. So we know now the history of the floods triggering recharge. Now we want to understand how recharge works. You have um, a borehole beneath, a slanted borehole that is filled with a flexible pipe. And on this flexible pipe, you have TDR sensors. Five minutes. <laughs> These TDR sensors are um, like every 50 centimeters or every meter, so you can actually monitor the progression of the wetting front and anything that happens during the flood. So now during the flood, uh, we could actually observe what happens, and this was really the first time that we got uh, that these data uh, were available. Interesting thing, the second event here, uh, we see that it fills up from below. Uh, we already had the pre-wetting, we have fast um, fast flow and then uh, the aquifer fills up and we can actually monitor the groundwater level. So we have always three things. Flood stage, trigger, vital zone, we look into the system and the groundwater. And with this we can actually determine recharge. We have the paleo floods triggering recharge, we understand how recharge works. Now we need to put this together into a model and we have a hydraulic hydrological model it is composed of different compartments. You see here K400. And now we uh, send these floods that we get from the paleo flood team through the channel, and we model infiltration with the data that we got from the Vado Zone team. We get a much better picture of recharge in desert areas. We have here now the number of years and the accumulated recharge that they provide for different stations. So we could actually estimate now the annual yield that we've got, but far more important, we also learn how much time it takes to have a replenishment. So in this case, 
um, management is not only restrained by how much water we've got. We also need to make sure that we don't pump too much, that within these three to four years, or maybe five, seven, we don't deplete the alluvial aquifer. So we can actually really develop an adaptive management scheme based on these data. Uh, we put this together to uh, a system model. And if you look at it, alluvial aquifers and drylands all depend on pumping. When you pump, you change all the hydrological processes, which is quite unique. You change transpiration, evaporation, even recharge. This means pumping is a crucial um, activity. We used all the data from the project, put this into a groundwater model, and then we simulated different um, <coughs> management uh, behavior and adaptive pumping. And we could actually see U means unused, E means um, a limit where pumping reduces evaporation, T transpiration, D means depletion. We found that by pumping smartly, you can get more water. So if you have alluvial aquifers, you need an adaptive pumping scheme, not just sustainable yield, you need to be smart and manage it. And then you can actually get much more water. In South Africa, we could get, instead of 200,000 cubic meters for a small valley, one million. We have paleo flood studies, and they provide an excellent record of extreme floods over the last thousand years. We understand recharge processes, it was monitored reliably, and this was the answer from my executive summary, 0 0.8, is the recharge flux. By the way, we found it also in Spain, South Africa. It was quite interesting, seems to be kind of consistent feature of the thermal streams. We um, develop a flood routing scheme that can be applied also to other ephemeral rivers and alluvial aquifers. And um, by adding isotope studies, groundwater residence times, uh, we can confirm the results and develop adaptive models.